Hello and welcome to another episode of Buncombe Weekly, a show right here on BCTV to let you know all about upcoming county-sponsored events. Now because it's beautiful fall weather outside, we're coming to you from the Blue Ridge Parkway in this episode. We're going to slowly work our way up, but we're starting here at Haw Creek Valley. Now just to let you know, all the information I'm going to give you in today's episode can be found online at our website at buncombecounty.org. You can also catch this show and any of our original programming whenever you like by visiting buncombecounty.org slash bctv. Finally, if you subscribe to our award-winning online magazine, Buncombe Ezine, from our homepage, you can get great county information sent to your inbox every week. Well, if you're watching us on television right now, you probably already know that we're on a different channel. However, if you're watching us online, yes, BCTV is still there. We've just moved. We are now channel 192 on Charter. Charter recently made the change to a digital signal only, and many of our channels have changed in the schedule, including BCTV. So make sure to check out all of our great programming on channel 192. You can also stream our channel live at bctv2.pegstream.com. We also put all of our original programming on our YouTube page. Just visit buncombecounty.org slash YouTube. Buncombe County government offers many great services and sponsors many great events for the community, so make sure to stay tuned to our channel so you can learn all about them. For more information, please visit buncombecounty.org slash bctv. Well, we're here on the next stop on the Blue Ridge Parkway, the Tanbark Ridge Overlook, and it's beautiful. So like I said before, if you get the chance, make sure to take this drive sometime soon while the leaves are changing. Well, our next story is about the Western North Carolina Foster Adopt Fall Festival that's coming up. Buncombe County is always in need of new foster parents, so if you've ever been interested or thought about it, make sure to show up. There's no obligation and you'll have all of your questions answered. I am a foster parent. I am a foster parent. I am a foster parent. Are you up for the challenge? Come join our team. There is a critical need for foster parents in Buncombe County. Foster families play an important role to establish safety and stability for children. And every child should have the right to grow up feeling safe. If you have any questions about foster parenting, have your questions answered at the Foster Adopt Fall Festival on November 16th at the Asheville Biltmore Double Tree Hotel. Well, if you've been in downtown Asheville since 2010, you probably noticed that they're building a new addition to the courthouse. Well, the four-story complex is now complete and they're holding a special ribbon-cutting time capsule ceremony coming up. It will take place on Thursday, November 7th at the facility. And when you come, make sure to bring an item for the time capsule. The new construction brings five new courtrooms and associated court offices, as well as rooms for additional expansion. It's anticipated to meet the facility needs of the court system in Buncombe County for the next 30 years. For more information, please visit buncombecounty.org. Well, we made it up a little further on the parkway to Bull Creek Valley, where in 1799, the last buffalo spotted locally was spotted here, but then it was shortly killed afterwards. Well, on to some brighter news, the Buncombe County Soil and Water Conservation District is holding their annual poster and essay contest with the theme, The Living Soil. So if you're a teacher for a third to sixth grade class, make sure to look into this because you can win cash prizes for your classroom for the best student entry. All Buncombe County students in third through fifth grade are eligible to enter for the poster contest, with sixth graders being eligible for the essay and slideshow contest. These contests encompass a wide range of topics that the students can incorporate in their competition entries, such as soil, conservation, natural resources, and many more. For rules or more information, please email renee.ray at buncombecounty.org or call 828-250-4785 or visit buncombecounty.org slash soil. Well, if you like wine and you like pets, the Asheville Humane Society has a great event coming up for you. It's the Taste of Compassion. Join them as they present over 20 different wines for tasting while you bid on hundreds of silent and live auction items donated by local businesses, artists, and organizations. You might even be a winning bidder for a 2014 Subaru Outback from Prestige Subaru. It will take place on Thursday, November 14th from 5.30 to 9 p.m. at the Crown Plaza Resort Expo Center at One Resort Drive in West Asheville. For more information, please contact eBaressa at AshevilleHumane.org. 
If you're looking to add a new four-legged member to your family, look no further than the Asheville Humane Society. They have plenty of adoptable cats and dogs like Swift here who are in need of a good home. Now, when you adopt from the Asheville Humane Society, not only are you saving a life, but all the pets have been spayed, neutered, received their shots, and some basic training. Asheville Humane Society is dedicated to the compassionate treatment of animals through education, sheltering, and adoption. Come visit the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center located at 14 Forever Friend Lane, just south of the Farmer's Market, to visit all the wonderful animals available for adoption just like this one. Meow is a one-year-old girl who's a very sweet lap kitty and she's just looking for a little bit of love. Pinto is a one-year-old boy, an Australian cattle dog whose joy in life is to stay next to his human. Helmet is an eight-month-old domestic short hair male who would love to spend lots of time just entertaining you with his antics. Arrow is a one-year-old coonhound mix who is extremely quiet and well-mannered. He would make a great best friend. Mary Jane is a three-year-old female, and what a beauty she is. She's just ready to warm up your lap during this cold winter. Montana is a three-year-old Catahoula leopard mix, and this fella would just love to follow you on a trail and go biking and hiking. Peter is a playful three-month-old boy, and he just wants to play and play and play some more when he's done playing. Lolly is a sweet two-year-old beagle mix, and she just wants to melt your heart with those eyes. Mary is a chatty seven-year-old girl who would rather be sitting on your windowsill taking in some sunshine than sitting here. Echo, a male six-month-old Australian cattle dog, is ready to start his young life with a human who will love him forever. Sequoia is a nine-year-old Persian who is front to clawed and she loves to be groomed, so this long-haired beauty just likes to be brushed and brushed. To reach the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center, call 828-761-2001. Or to view all of our available animals for adoption, go to our website at AshevilleHumane.org. Next stop on the Blue Ridge Parkway is Lane Pinnacle, with nearly 180 degree views of the mountains of Buncombe County. Now speaking of the pets in the last story, did you know that Brother Wolf Animal Rescue holds an event three times a week called Outward Hounds Hiking Group? So if you love to volunteer your time, you love hiking, and you love pets, this is the perfect event for you. It will take place every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You show up at Brother Wolf Animal Shelter and they give you a sweet shelter dog to take to great hiking locations throughout Western North Carolina. For more details and for other events they host, visit BWAR.org or email volunteer at BWAR.org. I'm Mike Carraway. I work for the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Don't feed the bears. A fed bear is a dead bear. Are you going on a big trip out of the country? Already have your passport and your bags packed? Not so fast. Have you had your travel vaccinations yet? It's recommended to get your travel vaccines four to six weeks before you leave. There are three types of vaccines for travel, routine, recommended, and required. So be sure that your family gets the correct vaccine at the proper time before your trip. Visit www.cdc.gov travel to learn more about health and safety tips when traveling out of the country. And enjoy your vacation. This message brought to you by the Buncombe County Department of Health. Visit buncombecounty.org slash health or call 828-250-5000 to schedule your travel vaccination today.
With all the bad weather that we've had this summer and with all the bad weather they're calling for in the winter months, it's good to be prepared and to have a preparedness kit. And to tell us all about it is Eddie Shook with the Buncombe County Health and Human Services Office. Thank you for joining us, Eddie. Absolutely. Um, and, and like Max said, there has been a lot of rain this summer. Uh, actually, right now, we're running almost 30 inches above normal for the Asheville area. So, uh, you know, being prepared is, is something that we absolutely want to want to keep in mind. Uh, September is National Preparedness Month. And uh, we're taking this time to really focus in and let folks know that it, it is important to have a basic preparedness kit assembled. Uh, okay. In this area, uh, loss of electricity happens from time to time. Flooding happens uh, from time to time. And as we get closer to the winter season, you know, winter storms are always a possibility. And we didn't have a terrible winter last year, but they're calling for a bad one this year, so it's even more important to be prepared. It is, absolutely. With, with hurricane season now just really getting in, into the heart of that season, uh, and they're predicting more storms than normal, uh, we've still got a ways to go in hurricane season. And like you say, uh, last winter was very, very mild and, and not it's much snow. Nice. It, it has <laughs> been, but we've got to be ready. Yeah. Okay, so what should someone put in your basic preparedness kit then? Basic preparedness kit and uh, needs to, to have the, the foundation in mind that you need to be self-sufficient for at least three days. In this area, we're fortunate that when we lose electricity, maybe it's for a few hours, you know, maybe for a day, but we still need to be prepared for up to three days. So what would we keep in mind with a basic preparedness kit, the items that we have in front of us, is really the fact that preparedness is within reach. These are items that you can pick up at the grocery store. Uh, you know, every time you go, you know, once a week, uh, just, you know, grab one of these items and soon you'll have that, that basic preparedness kit assembled. Uh, we have water here. Uh, what we always encourage is at least one gallon of water per person per day and have enough water uh, set aside for three days. Uh, we have some non-perishable food. Again, depending on your family makeup, how many adults, how many children, this will vary, but again, enough non-perishable food for three days. Uh, we have a flashlight, have ex extra batteries. Again, multitude of uses for this, uh, uh, no matter what the event is. We want to make sure that we do have that can opener. You know, absolutely essential. Something you don't think about. You have all the cans of food. And need to have a way to yeah. open that. And, and then lastly, uh, we have an AM, FM weather radio. And this particular model, it also has uh, a flashlight built in. And it actually have a, has a USB port okay. to charge your cell phone. But the amazing part about that one example is uh, it's, it's a crank version. Okay. It, it doesn't even need batteries. You can crank oh, for, for a few minutes and then you've got enough power to power the radio and charge up your cell phone. And what makes it a weather radio compared to just a regular handheld radio that people might keep? The, the weather radio band is specific to actually be able to uh, dial into just 24 hours a day, seven days a week weather forecast from National oh, Weather great. Service. Um, the, the other part about this is this again is just a basic preparedness kit. On the market today, there's lots and lots of much larger, more elaborate kits, and those are great. Mm -hmm. you know, those are absolutely wonderful, but they can get really expensive pretty quickly. You know, th this is uh, a, a preparedness kit that's within reach. Mm -hmm. Let's folks make some basic choices. Yeah, because all of this yeah. stuff isn't too expensive. I mean, it, what, what does a weather radio go for? That, that particular model, you're, you're in for about 35 to $40. And that's not bad, considering you never need batteries for it. Never need batteries for it. And, and yes, it's in your preparedness kit, but th that has uses throughout the year, even oh, yeah. non-events. So it, it really is uh, folks making some basic choices mm -hmm. and expecting some big things, because this actually prepares them for what's coming. And I, I grew up on the East Coast where we had yeah. hurricanes all the time, and they were right. pretty severe a lot of times. They tell you to fill your bathtub up with water in the uh, case of an emergency also, and all these other little tips because about flushing your toilet because you don't right. know what will happen with the water. Have we ever experienced something like that? Well, we'll need to worry about that here, or is that not as big of a... No, ab absolutely. You know, when power is lost, uh, especially for folks that are on a private well, mm -hmm. you know, the pump's not going to work. So having, you know, water in a bathtub, water in, in a few containers, so that they can flush their toilet. That, that's, that's always good advice. Now, this is just a basic preparedness kit. Um, if, what, what else would you recommend for a more advanced one for some people? For more advanced one, you know, absolutely a first aid kit. 
okay. is great to have. And then something that we always encourage uh, that's not in a kit, but please keep in mind, is, is any uh, pharmaceuticals, any prescription meds. Uh, you know, be able to, to see your way clear for at least three days, you know, to have that on hand. Uh, beyond that, you know, a preparedness kit can go into uh, blankets and, uh, you know, other emergency items. But again, this is just the very, very basic. So should every family member, like, have a little stockpile or should... Because because every because you have a preparedness kit for each individual family member, they all have different needs and stuff. So even yeah. parents should have conversation with their kids about like stuff that you should. A ab absolutely. What what we always recommend is you know that central stockpile. You know the water, the the non perishables. You know something that that's realistic. Yeah. For the family. I mean, in that event, you want you know foods that the family's going to like mm -hmm. that they're going to eat. Uh, but. Uh, you know, anytime you go to the market, to the grocery store, picking up a few items, doesn't take long to build that mm -hmm. kit. We recommend that every six months, every six months, take a look at the water. Uh, you may need to replace items mm -hmm. out of the preparedness kit. Food may actually go out of date, even the non-perishable items. So, uh, you know, check those stocks. Make sure that they're up to date and, uh, and it won't take long to assemble the kit. And, um, and it's good to know to do that every six months and to always keep one on hand because, again, with me growing mm -hmm. up, where if there was a hurricane coming in a week, the grocery stores would be empty. Right. So it's good to have this stuff all the time so you don't have to worry about rushing to the store before an event happens. Absolutely, absolutely. You're ready, you're prepared, mm -hmm. and uh, it gives you that peace of mind. Great. And if people want more information about this, where can they go? They can actually go to buncombecounty.org, and if they click under Buncom County Health and Human Services, public health and preparedness. There's lots and lots of good information that they can find there you know, about you know, uh, building a preparedness kit, but also some really good information about different types of weather events, be it flooding, hurricane, tornadoes, uh, and what they need to do to prepare in the event of how that they, they should respond. Great, and like you said, make small changes and expect big things. Absolutely. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, appreciate it. The Library, Recreation, and Culture Department of Buncombe County wants you to get outside and enjoy the fall leaves with their Story Walk with Leaves program. This is a whole new twist on reading time for kids. Laminated pages of David Urza Stein's book, Leaves, will be posted on a walking trail at the Buncombe County Sports Park. So the whole family can walk from page to page, enjoying the outdoors, getting some exercise, and learning. There's a surprise photo op at the end of the trail for the kids, so don't forget your camera. The Story Walk project was created by Ann Ferguson of Montpellier, Vermont, and developed in collaboration with the Vermont Bicycle and Pedestrian Coalition and the Kellogg Hubbard Library. For more information about Story Walk, call 828-250-4758 or visit buncombecounty.org slash parks. Well, the next stop on the Blue Ridge Parkway is here at Craggy Garden, where, as you can tell, it's a lot colder and it's the snow and ice all over the trees. It's actually very beautiful up here right now. Well, we're here to tell you about an upcoming science fiction book group discussion series at the library system. It's going to be called Imagining the Future, Revelations in Fiction. By studying classic science fiction novels, readers will be able to explore different attitudes towards science and reflect on predictions which have sometimes turned out strikingly accurate. It will begin on Tuesday, November 5th with Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, with guest speaker Merritt Mosley. Tuesday, November 19th will feature the book I, Robot by Isaac Asimov, with guest speaker Ann Jansen. These discussions will all take place between 6 and 8 p.m. For more information, please call the library at 828 250-4720 or visit buncombecounty.org slash library. And as you can tell from the last story, the library system here in Buncombe County is more than just quietly checking out a book and reading. They have many programs throughout the year for every age and interest. And here are a few more coming up. On Thursday, November 14th at 6.30 p.m., Pack Memorial Library will host a family fun night featuring the Red Herring Puppet Show. They will present their Adventures in Folklore show, which is a free, warm, and wonderful puppet show for the whole family. On Saturday, November 16th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Pack Memorial Library will also host International Game Day. 
Come to the Youth Services Department on the bottom floor where they'll have a huge assortment of board games to play all day long. For more information, contact Youth Services at 828-250-4720. On Thursday, November 21st at 7 p.m., the Fairview Library will host a book club featuring the book The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. All interested readers are welcome to take part in this or any of the county library system's many book clubs. Finally, on Friday, November 22nd at 4 p.m., the Weaverville Library will host another great session of their Teen Awesome Group, where you can make crafts for the holiday season. This program is for 6th graders and up, so make sure to bring your friends and creativity. The library will supply snacks, supplies, and a movie to watch. For more information about the Teen Awesome Group, please call 828-250-6482. Now those are just a few of the upcoming library events. To see the full list, make sure to visit buncombecounty.org slash library. And now it's time to keep an eye out for this week's Mountains Most Wanted. Buncombe County Crime Stoppers is a very important program that allows you, the citizens of Buncombe County, to partner with law enforcement to help keep our community safer. Your anonymous calls are very important tools in helping us locate people who are wanted by the authorities. I also want to personally thank you for making Crime Stoppers the most watched program on Buncombe County TV. Here are a few subjects we're looking for right now. Marcus O'Brien Lattimore is wanted for non-support, misdemeanor child abuse, and obtaining property under false pretenses. Lattimore is a 25-year-old black male with black hair and brown eyes. He's six foot and weighs 175 pounds. His last known address, 1-3-H Granada Street, Asheville. David Matthew Hewlett is wanted for possession with the intent to manufacture, sell, and distribute marijuana, felony possession of marijuana, maintaining a vehicle or dwelling for a controlled substance, possession of cocaine, and carrying a concealed gun. Hewlett is a 33-year-old white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He is six foot and weighs 145 pounds. His last known address, 7 Holcomb Drive, Asheville. If you happen to know the location of any of the mountains most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. All you have to do is email Crime Stoppers at tips at buncombecounty.org or call 828-255-255. The Buncombe County Transfer Station already makes it easy for you to recycle your metals in Buncombe County, but now they're going to make it cheaper. The Transfer Station, located at 190 Hominy Creek Road, now accepts metal, aluminum, appliances, bicycles, water heaters, old grills, lawnmowers, and more. The Transfer Station is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you have any questions, please call 828-250-6205. We're up past Craggy Garden where it's a little bit higher and it's a little bit colder. We're at Greybeard Mountain View and we're here to tell you about the upcoming Medicare classes from the Council on Aging. It's open enrollment time so if you need changes to your Medicare, you're new to Medicare or if you just need a refresher, this is a great class for you. Classes will take place on Monday, November 11th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the South Buncombe Library and Tuesday, November 19th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Lester Branch Library. For more information or for all of your questions on Medicare, make sure to contact the Buncombe County Council on Aging. They are sponsoring these classes in conjunction with the Senior Health Insurance Information Program and can be reached at 828-277-8288 or through coabc.org. My name is Dave Ligotti. I'm a jazz singer. I play in venues in the Asheville area here now. After the ordinance was mandated to have non-smoking venues, my health has definitely improved. My voice range has increased. I even had positive comments from smokers who admitted that although they smoked cigarettes, they still didn't like sitting in a room that was just emanating with cigarette smoke. It's very wonderful to play in a smoke-free environment. Thank you. 
Well, it's November and that means a lot of great things are happening. We have beautiful weather, we have family time, pumpkin flavored everything, fires in the fireplace, and of course holidays like Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. County offices, including the libraries and landfill, will be closed on Monday, November 11th for Veterans Day, and on Thursday and Friday, November 28th and 29th for the Thanksgiving holiday. To stay up to date with county closings, please visit buncombecounty.org. Well, we're almost at Mount Mitchell, but the next stop on the Blue Ridge Parkway is here at Glassmine Falls. Now, speaking of the holiday season, on Saturday, November 23rd, make sure to come to downtown Asheville for the 2013 Holiday Parade and Jingle Fest. This is the 67th annual Holiday Parade, and it begins at 11 a.m. This year's theme is A Star is Born, and it will feature many talented dancers, painters, singers, actors, and artists who reside in our community. Of course, you'll also get to see Santa Claus. This year, the parade is sponsored by Bojangles, Mission Health, the Grove Arcade, Deerfield Community, and many more. For more information, visit AshevilleDowntown.org. Well, Buncombe County has many great resources to keep you up to date with county-sponsored events, and we've made it easy for you to find them all. Just visit our website at BuncombeCounty.org, and they're right there on our homepage. You can see daily updates by liking our Facebook page, catch important county tweets on our Twitter, see all of our video uploads by subscribing to our YouTube page, our recent picture editions, which we update on Flickr. You can also check out our bulletin board on Pinterest. There are options to get your local weather, subscribe to our RSS feed, and even stay up to date with county crime mapping. And while you're at our website, make sure to check out all of our original programming by visiting buncombecounty.org bctv. Well, sadly, the road to Mount Mitchell was closed, so we're going to end our journey at Ridge Junction Overlook, just 500 feet in elevation lower than the highest peak east of the Mississippi. Thank you for joining BCTV on this journey. And speaking of BCTV, we're not your typical government channel that just shows our board meetings. We have a wide variety of original programming. We have everything from garden chores to cooking shows, exercise shows, travel shows now apparently, and many more. Programs like Buncombe Life, where we'll join Kathy Hughes as we learn why we're so fortunate to live here in Buncombe County. Come out and play for a detailed list of all of our county's parks, greenways, and recreation department events. Coverage of recent county news and Buncombe news updates. Our many healthy life exercise classes for every activity level and age. You can also join Margaret in the kitchen for some healthy WIC-approved recipes and cooking for your health. All of our mountains most wanted. Every Saturday morning now, we have stories with friends, and of course, our Board of Commissioner regular meetings. If you'd like more information about any of our programs, or if you would just like to send us some feedback, send an email to bctv at buncombecounty.org. Now, thank you for joining us on this journey up the Blue Ridge Parkway. You should definitely try it out yourself sometime, but make sure to check their website first, as parts of it can close due to inclement weather. Now, I hope you all have a great holiday season, Buncombe County, and to see all of this information again, make sure to visit our website at buncombecounty.org. <laughs>